Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Molly. I live in Utah, Zone 6 7, and it's been a while since I've been back on YouTube, and I kind of wanted to go over some of the things that has happened since I was gone. Now, I will link a video up at the top that kind of talks a little bit about grieving and gardening and the process that I've been going through in the last three months after losing my brother, but I also wanted to kind of catch you up with where we are at in the gardening journey show you what things have survived, what things didn't survive my grie grieving process, and kind of where we're at in the garden. Now, before my brother died, I had filmed quite a few videos and they, and I haven't edited any of them. Now, some of those may get resurrected, some of them may not. You know, some of them were very appropriate for the time that they were being filmed and are just not as appropriate right now. So we'll see which ones we resurrect. Maybe we'll take some footage out of those and kind of show you what's happening in my grow room and out in my garden. Now, the first thing I wanted to show you is my grow room. There were quite a few losses. You know, after my brother died, I only came into my grow room a few times, you know, like maybe once a week. A lot of things died from drought stress, and then we had a huge infestation of spider mites and thrips and mealybugs. We almost lost my orange tree. We're still treating it for spider mites. They reappear every once in a while but I think I am getting those. Yeah, there were some spider mites under here yesterday and we sprayed them. I've been using the Captain Jack Super Spray. It's an insecticidal soap with spinosad in it. And it seems to be taking care of the problem mostly. You know, they just, they're really hard to eradicate once they're in here. We ended up cutting our tomatoes and peppers back almost all the way to the pot. They're coming back again. We did end up getting a new lemongrass. We planted and replanted peppers and tomatoes. They died the first time because of drought stress and now they are just about ready to be transplanted out. I'm gonna give them another week because the temperatures outside need about another week before we can transplant them out. Today is, actually tomorrow is our last frost date, our average last frost date. But the day before yesterday hit below freezing, so we're, we're not going to believe that and just give it a couple more weeks. But I think we've eradicated the, well at least for now, for the moment, have eradicated the, me the mealy bug that was devastating my succulents. What I had to do is I filled a bucket full of insecticidal soap, you know, mixed to the direction, you know, mixed according to the directions on the label and I submerged these pot by pot into that insecticide spray and then I went through with a Q-tip and scrubbed down and washed every single plant on, in here. Some of them didn't like it so much. That purple one back there did not like it. These did not like being submerged and scrubbed, but the insect problem seems to be under control now. So we'll see. I'm sure it will resurrect itself. They tend to do that. And we'll just keep working on it and now that I have more energy, it's going to be a little bit easier to keep up with this. Now outside, we've had a very weird spring. It was an extremely warm April. We were in the 70s and in the daytime and at night was in the 40s. And it was beautiful and warm, but everything leafed out really quickly. Then in May, we ended up having a couple of weeks of below freezing temperatures and it was really cold. Now it's starting to warm up again, so we'll see how everything does. I don't think we're going to have a frost. I don't think we lost any fruit like we did a couple of years ago. So hopefully we're going to have a good harvest. And some of my fruit trees that have never fruited before are starting to fruit. So let's start on the deck and show you what I've been able to accomplish in the, few, the last few weeks. So one of the things that I did is clean out my green stalks. I probably need to water these again a little bit, but I refilled them. And I have seeds planted in here. I don't know if any of the seeds are going to come up. None of them have come up so far. We've had a lot of rain, a really wet spring, so I haven't had to water them. But I may need to bring the hose by right now. And I'm really not seeing any new growth in these yet. We did have a chamomile that grew by seed all by itself. So there is one thing in the green stalks that have grown. And we'll see how it turns out. So far, nothing has come up. But these were planted about a week ago, and the only water they've received is rain, and we've, been, we've had some below freezing temperatures. We've been able to mow my lawn once. The lawn is coming back to life and looking okay. 
our service berries actually flowered early and we're not going to have as big a crop as we did last spring but we are going to have a decent crop of service berries one thing that i am worried about is the warm the early warm spring weather did cause my jujube to leaf out early usually i don't see it even starting to leaf out until about this time of year so it misses all the frost but luckily from what i can tell we didn't actually get any freeze damage on these so i'm really happy about that i've got a new series gonna that's gonna go on this year and it's plant of the week like i did a few years ago we're gonna do a plant of the week we're gonna cover herbs these are two of the new ones that we're gonna cover this is a self heal that i grew by seed about three years ago and it's finally starting to spread we've got wood, wood betony We've got some pineapple mint that's coming up. Some lime balm that's related to lemon balm, balm over there. I've got my enormous gooseberry that's coming out. And then a gooseberry, I have no idea what it is because it was supposed to be enormous. When it first set fruit, it turned out it's a red fruit and enormous is green, not red. So this is something, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's setting a lot of fruit for us this year. Then we've got my chocolate mint over here. I completely cut back all the dead foliage on my May Pops. It's gonna be a while before they come up. They usually don't start growing until June. This is the middle of May and I'm not seeing any new growth here yet. But between June and August, usually gets tall enough to hit the rooftop. So we'll see how it does this year. So I'd done a previous video on my Vajega cover for my bed and it worked really, really well. I didn't get to film any successive videos but this is what it looks like inside i did actually miss the harvest window on a lot of my plants in here because i just wasn't up to harvesting or thinking about it i'm letting these bloom you know this is a cabbage right here i'm letting them bloom for the bees a couple more cabbage you know purple cabbage green cabbage we'll let them bloom for the bees and then we'll put tomatoes in here same with this side Still got some water in here from the rain that we've been getting. We've gotten a lot of rain. Pour that in there. Which is nice because I haven't had to water a lot of my gardens. Now this garden is quite dry because, you know, it's been covered with all the rain. But it's still doing pretty well. So the tomatoes are going to go in here also. We had a great bloom on our lilacs. This is my sensation lilac. I absolutely love the variegated flowers on this. And I just kind of let it hang out of my hillside just so that I can see all the lilacs there. And then it hides back up on the hillside for the rest of the year. And it's just nice green screen. This is my dapple dandy pluot. We had a lot of flowers on it. And I was hoping that because I had uh, flowers blooming on my other pl pluots, that we would get a good fruit set. But it looks like it's gonna turn out the same as other years. You can see how yellow these are? That means they didn't set. I don't know if it's a pollinization or what, or maybe this is just in too much shade. But I think we'll get a few fruit. I'm just not seeing very many. I usually get about five off this every year. It's a five-year-old, maybe a six-year-old plant. Let's see if we can find any that have actually set. I can show you what they look like once I know that they've set. So you can see right here, there's a difference right here. We've got a green one, we've got a green one, and we've got one that's turning yellow. The one that's turning yellow did not get pollinated, but this one did. So I think this one will be a fruit for me. We might have one down here also. These two did not get pollinated, so they are not gonna set. So these are my grow little fruit tree. Uh, pluots. This is my, my other ones. This one is, I think, a flavor king and then a flavor supreme. And they flowered a ton for the first time this year. Tons of flowers. But as for a fruit set, let's see if I can find any. There's a few here that may actually make it. There's some that won't and some that will. So we're at least going to get a couple of fruit off of this. Let's look over here. There's a few. This one for sure is going to set fruit. These will probably not. 
so we're actually going to get pluots this year. I'm really excited. Now let's show you my Asian pear. My Asian pear flowered for the first time this year and it's setting a ton of fruit. I may have to come through and thin these. There's going to be a lot of thinning going on this year. A ton of fruit, but I'm so excited. This is a Shinko Asian pear. It, it does seem to be a little yellow, a little anemic, so I may need to come through and throw some compost on the ground for it, but it's been doing beautifully. So I did get all my fruit trees pruned this year. It was a bit of a job. I did have people come and help out. I have an arborist that comes and he teaches a fruit tree pruning class. I did film that. I haven't had a chance to edit it. I don't know if I will have the energy to edit it, but we'll see. But he did, I'm trying to remember even what, I think it was on the apples this year. When he pruned my apples, that's what we did it. So I'll see if I can get that edited. It's late for this year. Not really relevant anymore, but uh, it could be helpful for next year. This right here is my gomi berry. It did flower. Let's see if I can find one of those flowers. This is the gomi flower right here. I don't think it set any fruit because the pollinator that we have, it needs a pollinator. I have a tiny little pollinator way over there that did not flower this year. Now this one, did seem to have problems with spider mites. I think we, we've got spider mites down in there that I need to come spray for. So this is the first plant I've had outside that seems to deal with spider mites, but it still is looking healthy. We unwrapped my pomegranates. This one leafed out underneath the wrapping and it leafed out extremely early. So I've had to cover it several, several times since but it's looking really good. This is a Parfianca pomegranate. It's one of the hardier pomegranates. I don't know if we'll get fruit off of it because I found out recently that they ripen really late. They ripen after our last fall frost, or first, they ripen after our first fall frost. So we may have an issue with that, but we'll see. I've got a lot of strawberries in the undergrowth here. Excited for strawberries. Fig trees, I'm not gonna uncover until I'm sure that there's gonna be no more frost. But they are leafing out in their little cages. And this way, if we get more frosts, we can cover those back up because they do not deal with frosts well at all. This is my little tiny gomi. I think this one is a red gem. The other one is a sweet scarlet gomi berry. So this is a pollinator for the sweet scarlet. It's really tiny and it's growing slower than the other one, but I think it's getting a little more shade than the other one. These are persimmons. We had to cover them up when we hit the freezes, but, and we still got a little bit of frost damage on the tips. You can kind of see that frost damage on the tips. Right, right there. I don't think they'll flower this year. This is only their second year, but I'm hoping they grow well and then we can get uh, flowers and fruit for next year. This one right here is an early Jiro. This is an Asian persimmon. This is an Asian persimmon, but it's late flowering and a lot more cold tolerant. But when the new foliage comes out, the new foliage is not cold tolerant. So that's why we have the stakes around it is every time we have a frost, I come through and cover it up. This is a Cassandra. It's a mix between the Asian and the American persimmon. It's leafing out. We've had to cover that during the frost too. This is a Shisandra or Temple of Bloom. This was given to me by Ben Bodie and it's doing well. We may need to prune this to a more upright growth pattern, but it's quite pretty. This is my Kazaki pomegranate. It made it through the winter with no dieback, just being covered by burlap. So I think this coming winter, I will try it without covering it. I'll put burlap out here to wrap it in case we're gonna get extra cold, but I think it should be fine. This fig right here has not leafed out like the other ones, but you can see the green stem way down there. So it's not dead yet. We've got a little leaf down there on that one. My columnar apples, one is blooming right now. This one's the Scarlet Sentinel. 
We did have some earlier blooms that I think set, yeah, it set fruit right down there. And then my north pole is going to need to be thinned out because it set way too much fruit. Bartlett pears is going to have a good set of fruit this year. I need to come through and thin it and bag some of these. The front half of my Fuji did not bear fruit this year, but the back half has a ton of fruit on it. Let me show you my let me show you the Jonah Gold over here and I'll show you how much fruit it set. So the Jonah Gold is covered in fruit and the back side of my September Wonder Fuji looks just like this. A ton of fruit, we're going to come through and bag them and thin these out so we can get a good crop. Decided to put all my kale and my Swiss chard in one bed. We have another volunteer we have another volunteer chamomile over there. A ton of kale and Swiss chard. This bed gets quite a bit of shade, so this is a good place for these. My Jerusalem artichoke are coming up. I harvested a ton out of that this year and did, just totally forgot that they were in my garage and they all rotted. So I didn't use any this year. Um, I actually tried to do some fermenting and it was a miserable fail because I used a crock that has a water seal on it and I let the water dry out and didn't pay attention to it. And so it rotted rather than fermenting. But this is what happens. I have been digging out Jerusalem artichokes from around the bottom of this. This is 17 inches tall and they grow through the bottom. So 17 inches tall is not tall enough. If you want to contain your Jerusalem artichoke, I would absolutely put weed cloth at the bottom of your beds because here's another one that needs to be dug out. This is another one that I've never really focused on, but that was looking good this year. This is an Arctic raspberry. It's a ground cover raspberry. It tends to have a lot of issues with chlorosis, but this year it looks a lot better than it has before. I've been really trying to work on putting down iron in the spring and in the fall, just to make sure that it does okay. Now it does need a pollinizer. This one I think is Sophia. I accidentally went and got another Sophia. But this one is different. I think this one is Valentina. So this is finally the first year where we've had a Valentina and a Sophia blooming at the same time. We'll see if we actually get any fruit. My currants are doing well. They got a little bit of cold damage and I think we're getting aphids on them. Yep, we've got aphids, which currants just happen to get really easily. But this is my Primus White. This is my Pink Champagne. We're gonna get a good crop of, off the Pink Champagne. I had to cover my Macrophylla hydrangea. This is an endless summer. But because I covered it, the frost didn't kill it back. And I think we're starting to see flower buds start. So we're gonna get flower buds early on this this year. But you can see just a little bit of the cold damage that happened even though I covered it. This is my Jostaberry. It's four years old, and this is the first year we're gonna get fruit off of it. You can see right there, I'll show you a picture of what the flowers looked like. They were absolutely gorgeous. Um, let's see if we have more fruit. Well, hopefully we get some fruit. They're turning a little yellow. There's some more down here. I really hope we get fruit off of this this year. This would be the first year we get fruit. There's a couple of them. We might get one or two. I cut back my golden currant so it's out of the path. It likes to lean a lot. It's getting aphid, severe aphid damage on it. So we're going to have to take care of that. But we're going to have a good crop of golden currants. And I'll show you what that looks like in bloom. It was gorgeous. This is my, this is my blue banana honeyberry. All my honeyberries bloomed this year. I have six, six different varieties and I'm going to get fruit on all of them but the blue banana is doing particularly well. It's really liking its spot. It's here under my pluots. This is a honey glen. We're gonna get one or two fruits off the honey glen. It's just a really tiny plant. I did transplant this one last year, so it's restarting. 
We did get flowers to see, oh, and we might get fruit. Yeah, we're actually getting fruit off of my, I think this is a Borealis, uh, Borealis Beast. Second year for the Borealis Beast, but the pollinator for that one over here, the Borealis Blizzard did not flower, so we're not gonna get any fruit off that one. Dan Owen helped prune my blackberries. They'll start blooming a little bit later this year, but we should get a good deal of fruit off of them because they're looking really good. These are uh, thornless blackberries called Triple Crown. Now, one thing that I have noticed, so I thought these were clump forming blackberries, but I have found, I have found runners all the way over there that I've been digging out. So I'm gonna have to dig out these also. I'm a little worried that it's gonna spread everywhere. We pruned my grapevines very, very late, but they are finally starting to leaf out and we are getting little flowers. You can see the little flowers in here. So we are gonna have grapes this year. I think next year I'm gonna to have to cut back all the arms on this vine and start over because they are starting to be a lot less productive. I use the spur pruning method, but sometimes the canes need to be replaced. And I think next year is gonna be the year where this whole thing needs to be replaced. So what I'll do is I'll just cut them all back off at the base right here and then let it grow back and choose the four strongest vines to be the ones that are my next canes. Raspberries are having a banner year this year. We've already got flowers. You can see the little bee there coming in to pollinate. We've got a ton of bees on this. And we've got a ton of raspberries forming, so I'm really excited. We were able to transplant out my cabbage. I had oh, probably eight of them in here and only three have survived, and this one doesn't look like it's gonna survive. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this bed, but they just are not doing well. So I'm gonna to have to figure out what's going on, and yeah, I'm not gonna be able to replant cabbage. It's too late in the year. But we're just gonna try again. You've, sometimes we have failures and we just move on. But one of my successes has been my kohlrabi, which I planted, grew and planted at the same time. The kohlrabi is looking glorious. It's planted together with my shallots, which are looking really good. These are Welsh on onions, which are a perennial onion that just come up year after year and slowly spread. And then it's easy to contain them because you just dig up the clump and divide it. This is where I'm gonna plant one of my tomatoes. Right now I'm letting all of the winter vegetables that were in here go to seed because I missed the harvest window. The chard is starting to go to flower. Got a big, huge flower stalk on my yellow chard. We've got, I think this is, this one right here is kale. And then we had some collards that are flowering. So we'll pull all this out, amend the bed, and this is where we're gonna plant some of our tomatoes when I'm ready. In my buckets, we have more shallots. This is my cauliflower. I kept them under plastic because cauliflower can be a lot more cold intolerant than some of my other brassicas. But they're doing quite well, so hopefully they'll continue to do well and I'll get cauliflower this year. This is another grape. This is my Concord grape. The first one was a hemrod. Concord is doing just fine. A little bit behind what it normally is, but it's doing okay. Garlic is looking fantastic. We've got coriander that's reseeded itself in here. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. Coriander's all going to seed. I'll let one or two of these go to seed for next year's crop. We've got the thyme on the outside of the bed that just continues to grow in that crack really happily. Now I did try to grow all my onions by seed this year again. Lost all the starts to drought, they all died. So I just went to the store and bought new ones. So we've got some red ones, some candy onions and some Spanish yellows. I think we also probably have some Spanish white in here somewhere. I planted my spinach out really early. This came out in March and it's looking good. We do have a little bit of leaf minor damage, but not too much. I've been eating these in salads. Got self-seeded lettuce all over the place. Carrots are doing well. 
but not one, I've planted three times, not one of my parsnips has decided to grow. This area up here, we have a lot of plants coming in. We've got our volunteer peony. It's just a single, you know, it's a wild type. It's really pretty, I really enjoy it. I think it's really quite pretty. But over here is one of my pride and joys. This is my tree peony. It's blooming and it's looking fantastic. I don't know the variety of this one. I've had it since 2009 and it just comes back every year. And this is the size of the flower compared to my hand. And I love the red that's in there. It's just got little red, you know, little hints of red inside the flower. Absolutely gorgeous flower. My fig for the first time, this, year, this fig was planted in 2009 on this hill, never fertilized. I don't pay attention to it. It always dies back every year and grows this tall, but this is the first year since 2009 that it did not die back to the ground. I don't know if we're actually going to get figs off of it, but it would be kind of fun if we did. This is a Chicago hardy. My elderberry survived the year. This is a Jonade Serenade Elderberry, Sambucus nigra. And I think it's finally going to settle in and do well. My plum tree has a lot of plums on it, as does my cherry. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a banner crop of cherries. Let's see if we can get these leaves up so you can see how many. This entire tree is covered like this. So we're gonna get a ton of cherries got to come in and thin my peaches. Look how many it's set. Look how much fruit it's set. My peaches are on their way out. They have got probably Cytospora right now, which is a disease of stone fruit. And uh, I don't think my peach trees are going to last it very many more years. But we're still continuing to get growth on them and I'm not going to get rid of them until they just say they're done. This one is an early Alberta, and I absolutely love it. We've got an O'Henry over here. The O'Henry's also fruited quite a bit. And then we've got a nectarine on the other side. We've got a Jupiter grape back there that's leafing out really nicely, as is my Canada's grape and my Swinson red. So I showed you the front of my Fuji apple that didn't set any fruit at all. But if you look at the back, it has set quite a bit of fruit. So we're going to wait until they get a little bit bigger and come back here and thin them and bag them so that we don't get any of the the worms in them coddling moth worms you can see down in there too how many have formed this is another one that i really enjoy this is called celtus it's like lettuce grows in the cooler parts of the year and the leaves are pretty good but you actually harvest it for the stem the stem is sweet and crunchy and has a little bit of a nutty flavor to it. So I'm really excited that my Celtus did not die. Now this is the front of my property. I'm going to show you just a quick few pictures of what it looked like through the time while I was grieving and ignoring it. But now it's just doing beautifully. These are my strawberry plants. We're going to have a ton of strawberries. Well, at least maybe the neighborhood kids will have a ton of strawberries. I usually let them harvest them. I'll try to get out here before they do and get some. My irises have started blooming. Catmint, we've got dwarf irises down here that are just so cute. I can't remember the name of this one. I'll look it up and see if I can find it. We've got more iris getting ready. The very first bloom on my little pawpaw. This is a, this is a sunflower pawpaw. I doubt that it's gonna actually give me fruit this year but at least we got its first bloom. This over here is my Slavatsky pomegranate, and it did really well over the winter. No dieback whatsoever. Hazelnut is doing well. This is a really windy spot, so I do have to keep a tie on it just so that it doesn't blow over. Got my white irises about ready to bloom. This is another really cute, I think this is baby blue eyes or something like that. But this is another cute little dwarf iris. Starts blooming really early and blooms a long time. Another beautiful little dwarf iris that I inherited from my stepmom. 
I absolutely love these. They're gorgeous. I've got my Jefferson hazelnut, which is the pollinator for my Doris hazelnut on the other side. It's not as vigorous as the other one, but it is growing and doing well. My carmine jewel bush cherry is actually going to form fruit. You can see all the fruit on that. They're very tart, but they're actually quite good cherries. They do produce full-size cherries, but they're not that sweet. My Juliet bush cherry did not bloom again this year, but I think it'll bloom next year. And we'll see if there's a difference in flavor. This is my Borealis honeyberry. And we are going to get a little bit of fruit off of this one. Let's see if I can find any. You can see right down here, we do have some of the fruit on my Borealis honeyberry. Not a lot, but we've got some. This is its third year. Got another one right over here. I transplanted my Aurora honeyberry over here last year, and it's actually going to bear fruit too. So like I said, I have six varieties. Not a ton, but next year that we should have more. I absolutely love my hellebore. They bloomed beautifully. I have five varieties and four of them actually bloomed. This is one of my newer ones. It's not as pretty as it's setting seed, but it was really gorgeous, a double one during the winter. It's another variety that looks just like this one, but it's a lighter pink when it's in bloom. This one is looking great. It did not bloom last year. It did not bloom this year, but it'll maybe bloom next year. And this one actually did bloom and is still blooming. Absolutely gorgeous. Now my strawberry tower is looking a little worse for wear. What I had to do is I had to pull all the strawberries out of it. They were absolutely gorgeous. They were heavy like this until I pulled them out to re-amend the the green stock. The, the soil level had reduced. I needed to add more soil, so instead of covering up the crowns, I pulled the strawberries out of here and then replanted them carefully. And most of them did not like that process. They're not completely dead yet. Some of them are rebounding, so we'll see how it goes. We're gonna have to figure out how to handle this process next year. Next year, I think I'm gonna need to amend them a little bit earlier. this guy up here I'm gonna to need to cut back all the dead because it's starting to come back it looks like same with this one so we'll see how it does this little fig is also starting to leaf out this is my Davis pawpaw tree we've got a lot of flowers on it pretty little flowers and I think we're starting to get fruit set look at that the, it didn't like the cold that much, but it's still setting fruit and setting more flowers. I usually get about 12 pawpaws off of this because they're only semi self-fertile and I haven't had a pollinizer ever. But I'm hoping next year when my other pawpaw tree, my sunflower pawpaw tree starts to bloom a little bit more that we're going to get better fruit set off of this Davis pawpaw. Now one thing I've been a little surprised about is this is a two-year-old almond. This is its second year. This is a Nikita's Pride, and I'm actually getting almonds on it. So we've got the Nikita's Pride right here, which is a really tiny little tree. Second year. This is the third year on my Bounty Almond. I, and we're actually going to get a few almonds off here, too. Not as many as the other one. Got some death there. Let's see if we can find some here. See, we've got a few setting nuts right here. I had some bigger ones on it, like these right here. Hopefully you can see those. We'll see if the fruit stays on. My medlar, and I'll link a video above about medlars, but it's getting ready to flower too, and it's gonna be gorgeous. We get a really good harvest every single year off of this, and it looks like this year is gonna be no exception. My lilac is absolutely gorgeous. We didn't get as big a bloom on this year as we had in previous years, and I think it was because the winter was so mild. 
but the flowers are gorgeous and they smell heavenly. And they look so pretty with my lemony lace service berry. This is a Glow Girl Spirea. We've got some big, huge, fluffy grape hyacinths. This is a different variety of grape hyacinth. This is a Rocky Mountain Penstemon that's in bloom. Best bloom I've seen on it so far. This is another Rocky Mountain Penstemon. This is one of my new ones that I'm really excited about. This is Luisia. Let's get my shade on it. Look how pretty those flowers are. It's a succulent and it flowers spring into summer. And it's been having a long uh, blooming season on it now. So I've got two of those. And I really love how this Luisia looks with the variegated iris, Glow Girl Spirea. We've got Germander over here that's evergreen all winter long. It'll give pink flowers in the spring. And then my glorious lemony lace elderberry. It's really quite a pleasing color combination with the lilacs in the background. I really like that view. It's got all your interest and the spring is especially glorious. This year we planted more chard and kale up front. We've got our little pansies that are starting to bloom. These pansies actually bloomed all winter long in the cracks here. Absolutely love those. My chase tree did not die back this year. It's leafing out. I'm so happy. It died to the ground last year, but then as you can see down at the base here, it grew back from the base last year like it's trying to this year. I'm just going to pull off as much from the base as I can and, and leave these branches so that we can have a good shape. If it ever dies to the ground again, I'm not going to worry. We'll just cut it to the ground and let it grow back. We've got our dwarf iris mixed with our immortality white iris that is so pretty. We had a really good bloom on our weeping rising sun red bud. The leaves stay yellow like this all year and it is really, really pretty. And I think it's especially pretty with the bloom. My hardy pistachio is looking really good. It's growing back. No flowers again this year. This is its fifth year, but I think we're getting close. One of these days we're gonna be able to get flowers on it and be able to tell you whether it's male or female. I know several people who are growing the same variety and hopefully whatever I have, somebody else will have the other pollenizer and we'll be able to get fruit. This little fig down here is my black mission. Did really well over the winter. My Chicago hardy. I've got to figure this out. It's leafing out now, but I have to cut it back so heavily to fit into its cover that it doesn't ever grow back as easily. I don't think it likes being cut back as heavily as I cut it back. So we're just going to see what happens with it. We're going to have to figure this out. Last of all, we have my Dark Towers Elderberry. Looking really good. Let's see if it's trying to set flower on it. Yep, we're getting flowers on it. When my Jonade Serenade is old enough to flower, then maybe we'll actually get berries off this. These needs, need a pollinizer that is from the Sambucus nigra family. The Lemony Lace Elderberry is, I think it's Sambucus racemosa, so it's not going to pollinize this. And the, the berries on the lemony lace elderberry are poisonous. And then last of all, I wanted to show you another surprise. These right here are my baby show-off. I think it's a baby show-off. I'll put the name on the screen. But it's a forsythia that's been blooming since February. And it doesn't even look like it's close. And it doesn't look like it's close to being done. This is May. The one th issue that worries me a little bit is these branches that have so many flowers on them don't have leaves. So we'll see if those leaf out. But it's been blooming for a very long time. So I normally do a series on what's blooming in my waterwise landscape at the last week of each month. And I will go over more of the plants that I have in here at that time, but we have got some beautiful ones. We're in between the tulips, the daffodils, and the iris blooms, but we've still got a lot of blooms and it's been we've had blooms in here since february i think so the blooms start in february and they don't end well counting my cute little pansies over here they didn't end through the whole year but normally you know, it was a warm a warmer winter 
but normally we have things blooming all the way through at least until December. So that's an overview on what's been happening in my garden since I haven't been filming. We've got some successes, we've got some failures, we've got some things I'm really excited about, and I plan on continuing to do at least three videos a week for the rest of the year. I, I think I am ready to be back into the game. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has been helpful, I hope you like and subscribe and share it with your friends because that is the best way you can help this channel and help me continue to want to make videos. And until we meet again, I hope you go have a wonderful GardenWise adventure. Mm -hmm.